As the grain from their first trip to Egypt dwindled, the brothers faced the necessity of returning or starving. Jacob refused to let Benjamin go, fearing for his safety. Judah took responsibility, promising his father he would ensure Benjamin's safe return. Genesis 43:34. They journeyed to Egypt with gifts for the viceroy. Balm, honey, spices, nuts and almonds, along with payment for their previous grain purchase. Upon arrival, they were welcomed into the Viceroy's home, much to their surprise. When they discovered their money had mysteriously been returned, they feared being accused of theft. However, the steward reassured them and released Simeon, bringing relief, Genesis 43. Upon his return, Joseph's heart filled with emotion upon seeing Benjamin. He wept privately before returning to his guests. The brothers were seated according to age. Joseph and his Egyptian retinue dined separately, for eating with Hebrews was considered an abomination to them. Joseph sent portions of food to his brothers, Benjamin's being five times larger, and they celebrated together, Genesis 43, 34. The next morning, the brothers joyfully began their journey home but they were soon intercepted by Joseph's steward, who accused them of stealing his master's silver cup, Genesis 44, 5. Confident in their innocence, they agreed that if found guilty, the culprit would become a slave. The cup was discovered in Benjamin's sack, leaving them stunned. They returned to Joseph, offering themselves as slaves to remain with Benjamin. Judah pleaded with Joseph, recounting how difficult it was to convince Jacob to let Benjamin come and how his father's life was bound to the boys. Judah offered to sacrifice himself as a slave to save Benjamin and bring him home to their father, Genesis 44, 18 to 34. As Judah's emotional story unfolded, Joseph became overwhelmed. He ordered everyone out of the room, leaving him alone with his brothers. Tearfully, he revealed his identity I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? His brothers were petrified, unable to respond. Joseph reassured them. Come closer. I am truly Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery. But don't grieve, for God sent me here to preserve life and made me a powerful advisor to Pharaoh. Return to our father, tell him of my position, and bring him to settle in the fertile land of Goshen. Joseph embraced Benjamin and wept, kissing each of his brothers. News reached Pharaoh, who approved of Joseph's desire to bring his family to Egypt. Wagons, supplies, and gifts were provided for the journey. Joseph urged his brothers, do not quarrel on the way. Genesis 45, 24. Upon their return, the brothers recounted the incredible news to Jacob. Joseph was alive and a ruler in Egypt. Initially, Jacob couldn't believe it, but the sight of the wagons convinced him. It is enough. My son Joseph is alive. I must see him before I die. Genesis 45, 28. Leaving his familiar land was difficult, but God appeared to Jacob in a vision at Beersheba, reassuring him of protection and promising to make him a great nation in Egypt and one day bring his descendants back to the promised land. With this encouragement, Jacob and his entire household journeyed to Egypt. Judah went ahead, leading to a tearful reunion between father and son. When introduced to Pharaoh, Jacob's brothers identified themselves as shepherds seeking refuge in Goshen. Pharaoh welcomed them, allowing them to settle and tend to his herds. Jacob also had an audience with Pharaoh, blessing the monarch. Genesis 47, 1-10. Jacob lived in Egypt for 17 years, reaching the age of 147, Psalm 105, 23. As his death approached, Joseph brought his sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, to Jacob for a blessing. Though Manasseh was the elder, Jacob knowingly placed his right hand, the symbol of greater blessing, on Ephraim's head. Joseph was displeased, but Jacob insisted. Both sons would lead great tribes, but Ephraim would surpass his brother. Jacob also bestowed a special inheritance upon Joseph, land conquered from the Amorites, presumably near Shechem, Genesis 48, 22, 
Joshua 17, 14. As Jacob's life neared its end, he summoned his sons, desiring to impart prophetic visions of their future. He began with Reuben, his firstborn, who due to his instability was denied the birthright of leadership and a double inheritance. Simeon and Levi, brothers in cruelty during the Shechem incident, were cursed to be divided and scattered among the tribes of Israel. Then came Judah, who would gain a portion of the firstborn's blessing, leadership and prominence among the tribes. His lineage would hold the scepter and authority until the coming of Shiloh, the peacemaker, Genesis 49, 1-10. After blessing his sons and predicting their future, Jacob again instructed them to bury him in the Promised Land, in the family tomb of Machpelah. Upon his death, Joseph had his father's body embalmed according to Egyptian custom. Pharaoh granted permission for a grand funeral procession, including his family, Pharaoh's court, and chariots. Instead of taking the direct route, they traveled a longer eastern path. For seven days, they mourned at the threshing floor of Atad, their sorrow impressing the Canaanites, who named the place Abel Mizraim, Genesis 50, 1-13. Only Jacob's sons proceeded to Machpelah for the burial. After the funeral, Joseph's brothers feared his revenge. They sent a messenger to plead for pardon, but Joseph reassured them of his forgiveness and protection. They lived peacefully in Goshen, and Joseph lived long enough to see his great-grandchildren. Before his death at 110 years old, he once again reminded his brothers of God's promise to lead them to the land of their ancestors. He made them swear to carry his bones there, and was then embalmed and placed in a coffin in Egypt, Genesis 50:26. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on this journey, and it's been great exploring its meaning with you. If you enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like button and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And for more engaging content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, stay blessed and keep learning.